Hello. All right. So section 6.5, powers of radicals without a calculator. So we're going to work through a bunch of these problems. This builds off of where we left off in the last video, the 6-4 video. And this gets a lot deeper into, um, it says powers of radicals without a calculator, but it's really when you have powers with fractional exponents, which turn those powers into radicals. Okay, so we're on page 129 in your notes packet. Okay, so we did talk about this in the last section. Um, okay, so for reciprocal exponents are really just rational or fractional exponents. Okay? The nth root of x can be written as x to the one over n, okay? where n is an integer um, and n is greater than two. Now, the reason it says when n is greater than two, this actually works when um, n is equal to two. So if I have x to the one half, that's really the square root of x, the square root of x. But square roots, you've probably never seen that written that, there before because it's not mathematically correct notation to put the two there. When there's nothing in there, you assume it's a square root. Okay. But if you have x to the one third, you know that's a cube root. And to distinguish that from a square root, you need to tuck a little three, three into that radical. Okay. This number underneath the radical, no matter what kind of radical it is, a square root, a cube root, a fifth root, a 17th root, this number underneath the radical is called your radicand. Okay. Not the most important term, but um, it sometimes we will refer to that as the radicand. This number here that tells you which root you're taking, are you taking the, the third root or so forth? This is called the root index. Again, not a term we're going to use all the time, but it is something when we get down to here, we're going to be talking about um, those terms. Okay, So reciprocal exponents just mean when you have one over a number. Okay, that's going to be an nth root. Okay, so x to the 1 over n, whatever number is in your denominator of your exponent, that's your root index. So it would be the nth root of x. So if it's 1 over 2, it's the square root of x. 1 over 3, x to the 1 over 3, it's the cube root of x. Okay, and this base becomes your radicand. All right, for fractional exponents, now sometimes you don't only have a numerator, you also have uh, I'm sorry, sometimes you don't only have a denominator, you also have a numerator. So x to the p over n, and I know I talked about this in the last video, p over n, you can write that as x to the 1 over n raised to the p, or you can write it as x to the p raised to the 1 over n. Okay, a power of a power, you multiply the exponents. Either way, you're going to get x to the p over n. Okay, so this is the one that typically is what we're going to use. It's the nth root, remember that number in the denominator, becomes your root index, and then this thing, the base, becomes your radicand. Okay, and that's what we have right here. Okay. Now, it is possible to take the nth root first, so the nth root of x and raise the entire thing to the p. Okay, these are actually equivalent. Okay. Now, why is the fourth root of four not considered simplified? Okay, so this is a, a definition of simplifying a radical that we probably haven't seen before. If it's a fourth root, and we can break down the four, two times two, you can think, well, in order to take something out of a fourth root, I need something to the fourth. I need four of something, and I only have two, so I can't simplify, right? Um, but actually, I want to show you something. Another definition of being the most simplified is that your root index, but the root index, that thing, in this case, the four, must be as small as possible to be considered fully simplified. Okay, so how do we know if that can be simplified? Well, let's rewrite this in exponential form. Sometimes simplifying radicals or even multiplying radicals or simplifying uh, powers with fractional exponents, sometimes it's useful to switch back and forth between 
exponential form and radical form. And then you can see how things simplify because there's different rules for simplifying when you have radicals and different rules for simplifying when you have powers. So let's rewrite this as four raised to the one over four. Okay. Now the next thing, and one thing I talked about here is whenever you have a power, it's always going to be, or almost always going to be useful to simplify this, to rewrite that base in the smallest base possible. Okay. Four we know is a power of two, it's two squared. So we can rewrite that four as two squared. Right. There's my four. My exponent on the four is one over four. Okay. Now we can use the rules of exponents. When we raise a power of a power, we multiply the exponent. The base stays the same. Multiplying these, you get two over four. Two fourths reduces to one half. And now we can turn it back into a radical. Square root of two. I think you'll agree that that's more simplified than this. Although both of these things are equivalent. Okay, they give you the same value. You can try plugging both this into your calculator and this into your calculator, and you'll get the same exact answer. This one's more simplified. The reason it's more simplified is because your root index um, is as small as possible. Here, your root index is 2. Here, your root index is 4. Okay. Now, we're going to go through these, and we're going to simplify these without a calculator. And a key thing we do almost always if you can rewrite each of these um, bases into a smaller base, it's always going to make your life easier, okay? So 16, and remember that page where we looked at all the different powers? Um, powers of 2, powers of 3, um, or the perfect squares and perfect cubes. If you study those, you'll recognize these more quickly, and what you'll do is you'll see that um, it's really easy to simplify. So 16 can be written as 2 to the 4th. To the four. There's my 16. My exponent on the 16 is 3 over 4. Now a power of a power, we multiply the exponents. That's really a 4 over 1 times 3 over 4. The 4s cancel. We get 2 to the 3rd, which is equal to 8. Let's look at the next one. Now notice this negative sign. Notice numbers 2 and 3. These look almost the same. Okay? But with PEMDAS, or order of operations, you apply an exponent before you tack on a negative, okay? A PEMDAS, the E in PEMDAS, and then this minus, your, it was really as if it's being subtracted from something else, because your base is just the 16. This is an exponent on the 16, and then after you apply the exponent, you're gonna tack on the negative. Whereas here, your entire base is negative 16. So these are very two, two, two very different problems. You can think of it as negative, 16 to the 3 fourths. Um, okay, we know that 16 to the 3 fourths, we simplified that. So that's 2 to the 4th raised to the 3 fourths. So negative 2 to the 3rd or negative 8. Okay, this one, now think about what this means. It means the 4th root of negative 16 raised to the third. Let me back up for a second. Can we rewrite 16 as a power of two? Well, we can't because two to the fourth is 16. Two to the fourth is not negative 16. And negative two to the fourth is not negative 16. There's no number you can raise to the fourth and get a, pot, a, get a negative number, okay? Not in the world of real numbers. So this would mean the fourth root of negative 16. Then after we applied that, we would cube it. But the fourth root of negative 16 is undefined. So this would have to be undefined. And let's look at the next one. Um, 343, if you remember that from your, um, your powers page, that's seven to the third. Again, if you forget that that's 7 to the 3rd, you can start to break it down. Um, but it might take some time. It's just going to save you some time if you remember this perfect cube. Okay. And then we can raise that to the negative 2 thirds. 
If you wanted to deal with the negative exponent first, you could. I'm going to deal with this first. Now I'm going to apply this. So power of a power multiply the exponent. So I get 7 to the negative 2. 3's cancel. Or 1 over 7 to the positive 2, which simplifies to 1 over 49. Okay. This one, you can rewrite 100. Again, you're going to rewrite your, your base into a smaller base if possible. That's 10 squared. I always put it in parentheses because that entire thing is the 100, which is being raised to the 3 halves. Okay. Power of a power. You can't really see that, can you? 3 halves. Multiply the exponents, so you get 10 to the, the 2's canceled, so 10 to the 3rd, or 1,000. Okay. Now this one, if you have a simple fraction, and what I mean by a simple fraction, I don't have two terms added together in the numerator or two terms added or subtracted in the denominator. I've just got a number over another number, and I've got a negative exponent. Okay. Remember when we turn this exponent to be positive, um, what's on the top goes to the bottom, what's on the bottom goes to the top. So I could leave this, I could flip this and say 27 over 8, and now my exponent becomes positive. I'll show you another way to do this problem, just to show you a couple of different ways. But now what I'm going to do, now I want to rewrite these into powers of smaller bases. 27 is 3 cubed, 8 is 2 cubed, that entire thing is being raised to the two-thirds. Okay, so remember a, a power of a quotient. So I've got three cubed raised to the two-thirds over two to the third raised to the two-thirds. Um, and that becomes, when you power of power, you multiply the exponents, you get three squared over, multiply these exponents, two squared, so we get 9 over 4. Okay, one more way, if you want to see another way to do this. I could have just applied this to the top and the bottom to begin with. 8 to the negative 2 thirds over 27 to the negative 2 thirds. Then rewrite these as smaller bases. 2 cubed to the negative 2 thirds and 3 cubed to the negative 2 thirds. I now multiply these. I've got 2 to the negative 2 over 3 to the negative 2. And that's when now I can flip these. This goes to the bottom and becomes a positive exponent. This moves to the top and becomes a positive exponent. And I get 9 over 4. Okay. So there's not only one way to do some of these problems. Okay, let's look at these on the bottom. Simplify by transforming the radicals into exponential form. Okay, now rad 22 divided by rad 11. Since these are both square roots, I can combine them into one. I can do rad 22 divided by rad 11. I can do rad 22 over 11, which is simplify inside rad 2. Um, leave an exact form. Okay, so it says transform into exponential form. So let's turn this into exponential form. That's 2 to the 1 half. Sometimes it just tells you exact form. Exact form could be either radical form or exponential form, so you have to know how to do both. For a lot of these, I'm going to give you the answer in both. But here it says to transform into exponential form, and I think this, this to me, the way I read this, is leave your answer in exact exponential form. Okay, so see how we did that? We combined these two because they were both square roots. If one's a square root and one's a cube root, you can't combine them into one radical because what would you do? Would you make it a square root or would you make it a cube root? You can't combine them together when they're different, when the root index on each of those um, numbers is different. So here's where we have to turn it into exponential form and then use rules of exponents. So we've got 32 to the 1 half divided by, actually, I'm going to just write this as a fraction, divided by 16 to the one-third. Okay? Now, sometimes I won't be able to simplify any further, but watch something pretty cool here. We can 
look at these bases and we can get these into the smallest base possible. And if it's possible to get both those bases into the same base, well, then we should be able to simplify. So 32 is two to the fifth. That's gonna be raised to the one half. 16 is two to the fourth. That's raised to the one third. Okay. We can get them both into a base of two. So multiplying these exponents, you have two to the five halves. I'm dividing by two to the um, four thirds. Now dividing two powers with the same base. Okay, we can say you divide the powers with the same base by leaving the base alone and subtracting the exponents. So five halves minus four thirds. Okay, when I'm subtracting fractions, I'm gonna go off somewhere else. Five halves minus four thirds. I have to get common denominators. So common denominator of six, so this will be three over three. This will be two over two. So that's gonna be 15 sixths minus eight sixths, which is seven sixths. So I've got two to the seven sixths and that is exponential form. Just for fun, let's put that in radical form just to review what we did the other day. In radical form, this one, number eight, that would be the sixth root of two to the seventh. Since it's a sixth root, we would need something to the sixth to be able to take it out. Do we have six twos? We do. We have seven, so we can take six of them. Sixth root of two to the sixth would just be a two on the outside. And then we have one two left inside our sixth root. Okay. So we could say, or this would be two times the sixth root of two. And again, be careful where you place that six, because sometimes if you place it in the wrong place, it looks like it's an exponent on this two out here. Two to the six times the square root of two is very different from two times the sixth root of two. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm running out of space, but what's nice about this one, this looks like, oh, how the heck am I gonna do that without a calculator? Well, let's look at this. We've got the cube root of six to the one fourth divided by six to the 0 0.2, okay? When we divide powers with the same base, we can leave the base alone and subtract the exponents. 1.4 minus 0.2 gives you 1.2. Okay, so now I've got six to the 1.2, and I'm gonna raise that, that's all under the cube root, so I raise that to the one third. Okay, sometimes it's easier to turn this decimal into a fraction. That's six to the 1.2 is 12 tenths, raised to the one third. And multiplying the exponents because we have a power of a power, we can reduce the full three um, and the 12 to one and four. So we've got six to the four tenths or six to the two fifths. So there's your exact, your answer in exact form. Um, in radical form, it would be the fifth root of six to the second. Radical form, exponential form. Okay. Let's look at these three on the bottom. Okay, so I've got 32. I'm gonna rewrite that as two to the fifth. Okay, now let's start on the inside. Two to the fifth, but that's under a cube root, so that's raised to the one third. Under a square root, so that's raised to the one half. So a power of a power of a power, we can multiply all the exponents. One half times one third is one sixth. Um, one sixth times five is five sixths. Two to the five over six is exact form and exponential form, or we could do um, the sixth root of two to the fifth. And that doesn't simplify anymore because we don't have, um, first of all, we can't reduce, we can't make the root index any smaller and we would need six of something, and we only have five twos, two to the fifth. Okay, let's look at this one. Eighth root of this times this times this. Well, let's simplify inside here first. Eighth root of, we've got seven. We have three powers with the same base. 
being multiplied. So we'll add the exponents, 1.4 plus 4.2 plus 0 0.8. Adding those together, I've got the eighth root of 7 to the 1.4 plus 4.2, 5.6, and that would be 6.4. Okay, so we've got 7 to the 6.4, that's 64 over 10. And that's all underneath an eighth root, so raised to the 1 eighth. It's kind of convenient, the 8 and the, we multiply the exponents, the 8 and the 64 reduce. So I've got 7 to the 8 tenths or 7 to the 4 fifths, which would be the fourth root of 7 to the 4th. And I don't mind if you leave that as 7 to the 4th, okay? That's almost, in some, some, some ways, it's more simplified if you leave your answer as a number with the small, smallest base possible. Okay, and let's do this one. 81 is 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is underneath a cube root. So that's going to be raised to the 1 -third. That entire thing is under a 4th root, so that's raised to the 1 over 4. That entire thing is under a 5th root, so that's raised to the 1 over 5. And we'll multiply all of these. That 4 cancels with this 4. So we've got 3 to the 1 over 15. Or the 15th root of three. And remember what that means. What number multiplied by itself 15 times over gives me three, okay? All right, and that's really the lesson for today. A lot of practice. Um, this next page in your packet, I don't think it's numbered, but it would be the page right after 129, is a skills practice. There's tons of good practice on this page. I recommend, actually a lot of this is assigned in your um, homework. I'm gonna do a few of these with you. If you don't have any questions on these, feel free to, um, to turn off the video, try them on your own. Um, I'm just gonna go through a few of these because I think it will be helpful um, if you want. And you know what, I'm also gonna post so the answers are over here if you just want to check your answers. I'm also going to post, um, I have all of these problems worked out with my handwritten solutions that show every single step. So if there's something you didn't understand and you want to see my steps, I'm going to post that for you also. But I'm going to do a few of these together. Okay, I picked a few that might be nice. Let's do number nine. Okay, negative 32 raised to the three fifths. Okay. Now notice the negative 32 is in parentheses. Can we rewrite negative 32 as a power with a smaller base? Well, we can. Negative 2 to the fifth. Okay. Remember, we can't write something with an even power becoming negative, but something with an odd power can become negative. This works out nicely because then we raise that to the three fifths. We've got negative two to the, uh, five's canceled to the third. Negative two to the third gives you negative eight. Nice thing about these, instant gratification. You check your answer and you see that we did it right. Okay, let's look at number 13. Okay, this is just another one, 729. If you remember what that is, this is where help, like studying those powers is gonna help you. 729 is actually three to the, uh, is it three to the seventh? Let me double check that. <laughs> I think it's three to the seventh. But if you're not sure, don't feel like, oh, I forgot it. There's nothing I can do. I know three to the fourth is 81. So three to the fifth would be that times three. So 243. Um, that to the sixth would be... So this thing times one more, three, two, 43 times three would be nine, one, 12, six, seven. Okay, 729. So I was a little off. It's three to the sixth, okay? See, so yeah, I would've saved me, myself a little bit of time if I had memorized those, okay? So 729 to the five sixths raised to the five over six, and we get three to the fifth, three to the fifth. We just said it was 243. 
instant gratification. We can check over here and we got that right. Okay. Next one, let's look at number 17. 256. Well, 256, if you are familiar with the game 2048, you might know that 256 is 2 to the 8th raised to the 5 over 8, which gives you 2 to the 5th, which gives you 32. 17, 32, looks good. Um, let's do 19. Okay, this one. Um, again, I'm going to rewrite these the smallest space possible. 625 is 5 to the 4th. 81 is 3 to the 4th. Now I'm raising the entire thing to the 3 fourths, so I can raise the top to the 3 fourths and the bottom to the 3 fourths. And I get 5 cubed over 3 cubed, or 125 over 27. It's number 19. Yep, looks good. Okay, let's go down to 23. Um, actually, we just did a couple like these, but let's look at this one again. We're multiplying these. Now, remember, the root index is not the same for both of these. They're, they have different root indices. So this right here is 3 to the 4th. It's 81. Raised to the 1 3rd times 27 is 3 to the 3rd, and that's under a square root, so that's raised to the 1 half. So we have 3 to the 4 thirds times 3 to the 3 halves. Okay, so you can go off to the side or on another page and say, hmm, I know I'm multiplying these, so I get 3 to the 4 thirds plus 3 halves, 4 thirds plus 3 halves, so 3 over 3 and 2 over 2. I get 8 over 6 plus 9 over 6, 17 over 6, 3 to the 17 over 6. Okay, that's nice, but what if I wanted you to leave that as a radical? 3 to the 17 over 6. Now it says leave, transform into exponential form, leave an exact form. So I would only expect you to do this, but just for kicks, let's put this in radical form. This is the sixth root of 3 to the 17th, okay? Can I simplify? Well, it's a sixth root. I need six of something to be able to take it out. I need a, a power of six, six, something to the sixth. Well, sixth root. I have 17 threes. If I listed them all out, three times three times three times three times three, I got to list 17 of them. So I've got, I just need six. Let's break them into six. It's three to the sixth. There's three to the six. There's six threes, six more threes. That's 12 of them. I can't get another group of six because I would be at 18 and I only have 17. So this would be to the fifth. Now I can knock this out, pull out a three, knock this out, pull out another three, and I've got nine times the sixth root of three to the fifth. Again, you could rewrite that as 243 or you can just leave it, okay? So your answer is this, or we could say your answer is nine times the sixth root of three to the fifth. Okay. And what else? Should we do a couple more? Well, let's do this one, a division. So the cube root, five to the 2.7 divided by five to the 1.2. So that's gonna be the cube root of five we're going to subtract the exponents when we divide powers at the same base. 2.7 minus 1.2 is 1.5. Conveniently, 1.5 as a fraction is 3 halves. So we've got 5 to the 3 halves raised to the 1 third. Power of a power. So we get 5 to the 1 half or rad 5. I think they give all these as um, exponential forms. So 24 was this. Let's just double check 23. Did we get that right? We did, okay. Um, I had picked out a couple more. but uh, um, This one's kind of interesting. We don't have to do it, but when you have 10 to the 8.2 times 10 to the 1.3, those two combine those two first and add the exponents. And then when you divide by this, you're gonna then subtract the exponents. So whatever you added the exponents here to be, um, 8.2 plus 1.3, so that's 10 to the 9.5 divided by 10 to the 2.9. So you'll subtract the exponents. 
So I've got the sixth root of 9.5 minus 2.9, so 9.5, 8.5, 7.5, 6.6, so 10 to the 6.6, .6, or 66 over 10. So I've got 10 to the 66 over 10. Um, raised to the 1 over 6. So this reduces this and 11. So 10 to the 11 over 10. Okay. I want to write that as a radical. That would be the 10th root of 10 to the 11. We need 10 tens to be able to put one out. We have 10 tens with one left over. So the 10th root of 10. Okay. 10 to the 10th root of 10. Again, you don't have to do radical form and exponential form. I just like to show you both. Um, let's see, do we want to do another one? 31, I think that one's okay. 33, 34. Actually, we just did a couple like these. So I think that's good for now. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I, again, like I said, I will post, actually with the video notes, I will post the solutions to this entire page. Okay, in addition to posting, you know, this page right here. All right.